Hi there. We're the friends of Eastbourne Seafront. We love living here and think our seafront is fantastic. Among other things, there's the beach itself, of course, and there's nothing better than a stroll along the miles of promenade between the harbour and Hollywell, or watching the waves from one of the many cafes dotted along it. There are some fantastic parks to enjoy, such as Helen Gardens, the Italian Gardens, or the Western Lawns, and the carpet garden flower display by the pier always looks stunning. The skate park is a fantastic addition. We love riding the Dotto train, and the new sea-themed murals look great. But there are problems too, and that brings us to why we exist. Let's start here at Fort Fun, out to the east of town. Privately operated on a council-owned site, it was once a great attraction for all of the family. It had water slides, crazy golf, trampolines, and loads more for a fun day out. But a lack of investment, along with dwindling visitor numbers, and then the COVID pandemic, resulted in the operating company giving the keys back in May 2021. Instead, this rusting tangle of sand, slides, and pipes is up for expressions of interest ideas for redevelopment. There's now a very short-term proposal for reopening just the indoor play area and the outside kiosk, which looks like happening. But what this site desperately needs is a long-term plan and investment to secure its future. After the council went to central government for a COVID bailout, a subsequent government-commissioned audit report was produced, urging the council to sell off assets, including those whose values will be enhanced through a development options appraisal and gaining change of use, such as the key strategic seafront sites. Because of this, we're now concerned that this site, among others, might just ultimately end up being sold off to housing developers instead of becoming something for everyone once again. Not so that we don't think Eastbourne needs more housing, of course, but just not right here. So, moving west along the promenade, there's the newish colourful beach huts to rent, and then Buzz Active, which is a great place for trying sailing, windsurfing or paddleboarding. Around the corner there's Fisherman's Green, with the Crab Shack seafood stall on the left and public tennis and basketball courts on the right. Past the Sea Cadets, the Angling Association and the Sailing Club, Treasure Island, which is great for the kids, and past the Beach Deck Cafe and the Bowling Greens, we arrive at our next stop, the Redoubt Fortress. The Redoubt was built in 1805 as an anti-invasion measure to halt any potential Napoleonic advances. Apart from the building itself, with its fascinating history, military museums and cafe, it also used to host numerous events such as stargazing, ghost tours and cinema shows. Unfortunately, whilst it may have been strong enough to scupper any of Napoleon's plans back in the day, time and neglect hasn't been kind. It was closed in 2019, initially for a year of repairs, but never reopened. We did volunteer to help to get it open, but were told electrical and health and safety issues prevented it. Workmen have now recently appeared on site, clearing the weeds and the rubbish, but whilst it's probably too late for it to reopen this year, at least this important historic attraction is now back on the Council's radar. Tucked away behind the readout and hidden out of sight by the blue hoardings as you walk along the seafront are the colonnades. Once a part of an earlier iteration of the bandstand, disgracefully allowed to deteriorate to the point that they're now condemned. Continuing on, there's the Pavilion Cafe and Calisthenics Exercise Frame, hotels accommodating every taste such as the Art Deco Langham, the East Beach which does a fantastic Christmas display, and the distinctive Port Hotel. Let's pause at these two curious constructions. Called What Unearthed and Spyglass respectively, they're actually some of the winning designs of a council-led international architectural competition held in 2016 for bold and imaginative beach huts. 
There were supposed to be five of them, and we're not entirely sure why the other three were forgotten. Although, after the initial fanfare, the two we do have were pretty much forgotten too, with Spyglass particularly allowed to fall into an increasingly sorry state of disrepair. Fortunately, however, a young local entrepreneur has taken over their leases and renovated them with the innovative idea of repurposing them as outlets for seafood tacos and ice creams. Moving on. There's Gelato Famosa for yummy ice cream, the Crown and Anchor's a great pub, and after the Marine Parade becomes the Grand Parade, we find the area below the pier. And grand it isn't. At this point, the Grotty Parade would be more appropriate. The recently produced plastic-free Eastbourne artwork goes some way to distract from the numerous dirty old beams, pipes and cables running across the ceiling and along the wall, hemmed in by a load of hoardings containing who knows what below the pier. But it's still just a gloomy, unpleasant tunnel. And as for the gents and ladies' toilets on either side, don't go there. Not unless you're desperate anyway, because pleasant they're often not. But with the area around the pier being such a focal point for tourists, and as a reflection of our town, they, and it, really shouldn't be in such a state. Onwards again, past the beach bar and the beach cafe, a couple of the funky new murals, and on to where this all started for us, the bandstand. The site of our first campaign, the bandstand should be Eastbourne Seafront's jewel in the crown. Built in 1935, the unique semicircular design and the blue domed roof of this iconic building is one of our town's most recognisable sites. It even has its own stamp. Used primarily as a fantastic music venue, thousands would visit from all over to enjoy the ambience and see the shows each year. A magical experience and a major draw for our town, holding the title of busiest bandstand in the country. But not any longer. Again, it's that same old story of years of underfunding and neglect to the point where it's now been forced to close completely due to safety concerns. To allow this to happen to such a fantastic heritage attraction is appalling. Even more so when considering that, according to the Council's Tourism and Enterprise accounts, that hallowed pre-Covid year of 2019, it was the third most profitable, making a £229,000 net profit. A quite disgraceful dereliction of duty of a much-loved and now badly missed major attraction. A remedial sticking plaster is underway to at least allow it to reopen in 2023, but that falls very far short of the restoration it deserves. We could keep going further along the seafront, stopping off at the Wish Tower, now closed to the public due to the deteriorating condition of its walls and ceiling, or maybe mention the awesome Eastbourne Airborne show, which is very possibly in its final year due to council cuts. Or perhaps more generally, show you some of the other poorly maintained seafront assets. But you've got the idea. We know that money is tight. Yet among other projects, in excess of over £50 million has been found for the Devonshire Quarter and the tennis. £7.6 million sourced to pedestrianised Terminus Road. And £11.2 million for the out-of-town Black Robin Farm development. Now we love theatre. And we love tennis. We love car-free El Fresco dining. And we may even come to love whatever the heck Black Robin Farm turns out to be. But the point is that plenty of money has been found for numerous other nice-to-have projects over the years, whilst inexplicably ignoring the seafront's urgent need and allowing it to crumble. It just doesn't make any sense. Eastbourne's a seaside town, and it's primarily the seafront and all it offers that not only make it such a terrific place to live, but also brings the visitors to our town, in turn supporting innumerable local businesses. We're not political. We don't care if the council's led by Lib Dems, the Tories, or the monster raving loony party. What we do care about is the policies, or lack of, that affect the seafront, 
and would be raising the same concerns regardless of who was in charge. But from now, the seafront needs to become the Council's number one top priority, and we are demanding all future relevant funding sourced to be aimed accordingly. The various councils over the years may have forgotten what makes Eastbourne truly Eastbourne, but we haven't. And we're here to remind them, and we hope you are too. If you love our wonderful seafront as we do, please follow us on Facebook, join our group, write to the council and let them know how you feel. So starting with the bandstand, repair, restore and reopen our seafront and let's make Eastbourne great again. <laughs>